guys how's going on my name is Luis and god bless every single one of you today is october 24 2023 and welcome to the grand supreme news channel all right guys so we have some urgent information coming out if you can please share this video and it says here the washington post reports that the white house has ordered the department of defense to prepare a contingency plan for a worst case scenario in the middle east it would include the evacuation of more than half a million u.s citizens from israel and lebanon half a million not only that but uh, i post a video early today the u.s is sounding the alarm to any ship out there this is a huge warning to any ship out there that's traveling uh through the red sea to be aware of missiles and drones from the hoodies uh rebel in yemen so they're putting out warnings out there uh u.s uh air base are being impacted in various places and uh, especially in iraq and syria so it's very important that people start preparing spiritually physically and mentally i post two very important videos about these preparation that they putting out there uh you also had mr i think john kirby that's his name one of the members of the biden administration he put out a very important message he said that you know there's going to be big event to come there's going to be chaotic this war is going to be huge civilians going to be impacted it's going to be uh bloody is going to i mean he was putting out information that uh just make you want to think twice and you know it's very important that uh, people start uh seeking for the kingdom of god because eventually this thing is going to hit the fan and it's going to hit really hard u.s readies plans for mass evacuation if gaza war escalates so I just got home. I was going to post this video around 3 p.m. Eastern time. Again, this uh, this information uh, came out. Yeah, it came out early today, uh, 8.16 a.m. And I already had it set up, but I had to go somewhere, guys. It was a very important uh, place I had to go to. I did a couple of errands today, so there was so many things I had to do. And uh, taking my uh, daughter to her doctor's appointment. So again, it's you know it's time consuming. I mean, not time consuming. It's race against time. So I just got home. I'm gonna make this video, and then I got two more videos coming up later on tonight because I gotta go somewhere else after this one here. So I'm a very busy man today, guys. But uh, we are seeing a lot of things happening in the world. Officials said that they're. Uh, officials said that the more, what? Officials said that the more. Then 600,000 Americans living in Israel and Lebanon are of particular concern. But they stress that an operation of such magnitude is a worst case scenario. Here's the thing um, 600,000. That's, uh, uh, remember the Afghan, the Afghanistan back in 2021. You had the president withdrew the uh, troops out there. They sent big planes. Uh, well, 200,000 people were taken from Afghan to here. And it took, it took I think, two months for 200,000. So a half a million, if they want to start evacuating, I think now is the time. I mean, half a million, that's a lot of people. All right, so you have... Uh, the president administration is preparing for the possibility that hundreds of thousands of American citizens will require evacuation from the Middle East if the bloodshed in Aza cannot be contained, according to officials familiar with the U.S. Gov. Now, I want to show you something really quick here. We talked about this. I want you to listen to this uh, video. This is very important. All right. So this is what this man said. All right. This is war. It is a comeback. It is bloody. It is ugly. And it will be chaotic. And it will be chaotic. Listen to the words. And innocence will be impacted in the future. 
you got to listen to uh, these people when they speak. And I'm posting very important videos. And so uh, you guys see what's really going on and how to prepare yourself. This is war. It is combat. It is bloody. It is ugly. And it's going to be messy. And innocent civilians are going to be hurt going forward. I wish I could tell you something different. I wish that that wasn't going to happen. I wish I could tell you something different. I wish that this could have never happened. All right. So basically, guys, listen to these words. He's basically saying that, you know, uh, I wish, you know, I could tell you something different, which means that eventually we will see something. We will see something. We had a point that there's no turning back. So once again, guys, uh, this video link will be in the comments box. I made a video of it if you guys want to check it out. But uh, again, White House is saying this is war. It is a comeback. It's bloody. It is ugly. And it will be chaotic. And innocent ones will be impacted. So if they want to start uh, evacuating, I think now is the time. All right, so once again, guys, it says here, uh, you have specter of such an operation comes as the Holy Land forces aided by the U.S. weapons and military advisors prepare for what is widely expected to be a perilous ground offensive. Perilous. We heard that word before. Perilous. Perilous. I heard that word before. Hmm. I made a video yesterday about uh, the U.S. president rushed to the operation. I mean, the uh, oh, what is it? The operating? No, it's not the operating room. Um, ah oh, man, I forgot, guys. I've been so busy this last couple of days. Uh, so many things is running in my head right now. The situation room. All right, so the president went to the situation room. And the first lady is like, you know, in a situation room, I would like to see my husband there, but we are seeing perilous time. So that name right there keep popping up. Um, so once again, it says uh, prepare for what is widely expected to be a perilous ground offensive. A situation room, something when you know, possibly wrong in there to pop, probably talk about this evacuation. All right. So. Perilous ground offensive against Amas militants responsible for the stunning cross border strike that had re reignited hostilities. The official speaking under condition of anonymity to detail eternal deliberation said Americans living in Israel and neighboring Lebanon are of particular concern. Though they stress that an evacuation of that magnitude is considered a worst case scenario and that other outcomes are seen as more widely. Still, one official said, it would be uh, irresponsible not to have a plan for everything. Listen up, Sleeping Giant. If this is their plan, you also need a plan too. Prepare, prep, get stuff ready. You cannot rely on these those in the spotlight 24-7. You can't rely on them. You cannot rely first of the month. Lewis, I'm getting my you know food stamp first of the month. One day that thing is gonna be turned off. <laughs> Man, uh, you gotta learn how to hunt. You gotta learn how to grow food on your own. Uh, how to prep, how to find clean water. Because eventually all this will turn off. And uh if uh if you don't have knowledge or any wisdom on how to survive on your own, that's going to be really hard. So once again, you have the, uh, the administration, despite its forceful public support for the Holy Land, is deeply alarmed by the prospect of escalation. And in recent days, it has turned its attention in part to the complicated logistic of abruptly having to relocate a large number of people. According to three people familiar with the discussions, there were about 600,000 U.S. citizens in Israel and other 86,000 believed to be in Lebanon, with a Hamas strike, according to State Department estimates. 
Once again, the State Department is putting out the warnings. They're putting out almost 700,000 citizens. That's a big number. The concern in Lebanon is chiefly over Hezbollah, a political party and militant group that, along with allies, um, currently controls the largest number of pal parliamentary seats. It entered in 1992 and has long accepted training and powerful stuff from Persia, prompting concern. Give me a second here, guys. Once again, prompting concerns that uh, it could strike Holy Land from the north, creating a two front war that would stretch uh, the Holy Land forces already. They have been skimmerish uh, along their shared border. So it says here, once again, this has become a real issue, one official said. The administration is very, very worried that this thing is going to get out of hand. You guys already heard. And I said a lot. This thing is about to hit the fan. It's going to hit really hard. And this is coming out from the administration. Saying that it's very, very worried that this thing is basically going to hit the fan. It's going to hit hard. The administration concern extends beyond those two countries. As officials watch the streets rise that have spread across the uh, Arab world, putting both the U.S. personnel and citizens in a region at heightened risk. The bombardment of Aza has inflamed regional fury at uh, Israel and its treatment of Palestine, an issue some officials believe no longer carry as much importance in the Arab world. So we were told for the last 10 years that the Arab world and the Mu's world didn't care about Palestine anymore. And Abraham Accords were proof of that, this person added, referring to agreements signed by the Gov of Saddam, Morocco, Bahrain, and the UAE, aimed at normalizing relations with the Holy Land. Well, the palace has come back. I don't think it ever went away. More than 5,000 people in Aza, mostly uh, civilian and young ones, have been taken out amid unrelenting Holy Land airstrikes since the October 7 event. So you have top U.S. officials have not wanted to discuss such contingency planning in public, hoping to avoid setting off a panic among Americans in the region, but their approach uh, has shifted in recent days to convoy the anxiety about other actors entering the conflict. Damn. Last week, the State Department issued an advisory to all U.S. citizens worldwide to exercise increased caution due to increased tensions in various locations around the world the potential for tea strike and demonstration or lawlessness action against U.S. citizens and interests. The warning was in response to demonstrations that have captured, uh, erupted in response to the Holy Land Amas conflict and broader anger in the Arab world over Washington's full political, economic, and military backing of the Holy Land. Yeah, it's not looking good. Depending on the scale of a potential U.S. evacuation, it could be more difficult than any previous operation in recent memory, experts said. It could arrive, uh, excuse me, it could involve Air Force aircraft or Navy warships, which have surged to region this month. Well, the Navy ships are out there. They are putting out the warnings to those that want to travel to, uh, through the Red Sea. To be careful, they are firing missiles. When I say they, I'm talking about one of the Iranians' proxies, uh, hoodies uh, from Yemen. All right, so with 600,000 Americans in Israel, uh, threats to other Americans across the region, it's hard to think of an evacuation that might compare to this in a scale, scope, and complexity. 
All right, so it says here, the sort of advisory the State Department has put out lately have been fairly blunt. But again, they don't want to panic the world, basically. But guys, when you hear stuff like this, this is not for people to panic. Don't panic. But stay prepared. Put on the whole armor. Be aware. Ain't nobody said this is a kumbaya world. Nobody said this is a uh, this is heaven, but uh, this is a fallen world. It's been like this. It's been going on like this for thousands of years. So uh, the first thing that people's gonna look at or point finger is at God. But God is not causing all this. God gave us free will. Men make really really wrong decisions that leads to these events. So again, the uh, Bible is like well. You know, there's poor people in the streets. Uh, how could God uh, let those people starve? Didn't the Bible says to go out and feed the, the poor and go to the hospital and pray for the sick or go to pray, uh, you know, visit the people in prison and uh, give them the good news that they still could be saved? We need to work uh, together in this. this. There's enough food for everyone. Just people don't want to share. <laughs> and the first thing they do is just point finger at the Lord. On Monday, you have the Pentagon signal, too, that it is bracing for a significant increase in strikes on the U.S. troops. And I post the video of that, guys. Uh, another base was his. So that link will be in the comments box. All right, the U.S. troop in the middle E and the department signaled a uh, single out uh, Persia for its extensive sponsorship of militant group with a long history of using rockets and drones to target sleeping giant military position. In response, this uh, Pentagon official said they are surging additional missile defense system to the region. All right, so I'm just gonna say Patrick, a Pentagon spokesman, told reporters that a broader escalation is possible in the days ahead, in the days ahead, in the days ahead. Gotta say that three times. Senior military leader, he said, are taking all necessary measures to safeguard U.S. personnel. Particularly vulnerable are the estimated 3,400 troops deployed in Iraq. I just posted a video. This area, an air base was hit. There are sleeping giant soldiers in that area. Also, there was an air base that was hit, hit here too. There was four that was hit here, and I think there were like 13 or maybe more that was hit here. We need to pray for the soldiers, the U.S. soldiers. All right, so these areas were earlier in the day, U.S. personnel base near Jordan border intercepted at least two one-way strike drones, official said. Americans operating in those countries have been targeted for years by Persia backed militia, including I'm gonna skip their names. So we don't necessarily see that Persia has explicitly ordered them to take these kind of events, Ryder said. Now uh, that said, by virtual of the fact that they are supported by Persia, we will ultimately hold Persia responsible it is unclear it's unclear how many times deployed personnel have come under fire since the holy land armors crisis began in october 7 officials said that the pent was compiling a list of confirmed incidents but that the effort had been hampered by uh what one senior defense official called the pure fusion of i'm gonna skip those names no sleeping giant personnel are known to have been out or seriously injured in any of the spillover lawlessness. A sleeping giant contractor in Iraq did suffer a fatal heart attack last week as troops and others at the N. Uh, Assad Air Base uh, raised to take cover, raced to take cover from what proved to be a false alarm of an incoming strike. All right, so that's where we are right now. That's where we are right now. So what's next? What's next?
A lot of information coming out. Give me a second here. This is the information that I had uh, set up and I was going to post this video around three, but uh, I got a call and I had to do something. I had to go do a couple of errands. I was really busy today, guys, and I still have to go to the gym. Uh, I've been missing the gym for the past four or five days already and be slacking. But uh, again, war in the Middle E. Mr. Brown official tells the Washington Post that the administration is very, very, very worried that this thing is going to hit the fan. And it's going to hit it really hard. I talked about this in my first video posted today. I think it was at noon. But like I said, the link will be in the comments box. And I want to finish off with this here. Alert. The number of U.S. fighter jets deployed in the Middle East has now reached 58. Today, 10 F-16 fighter jets from the 119th Fighter Squadron of the U.S. Air National Guard have arrived in Jordan and Saudi Arabia to enhance the defense of U.S. military forces and support Israel during the ongoing conflict. This influx of fighter jets underscores the U.S. commitments to regional security and stability. Stay tuned for further updates. This is, uh, this is biblical war. It is combat. It is bloody, it is ugly, and it will be chaotic. And innocent will be impacted. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to keep you updated on these stories. Once again, that's their plan. The evacuation of half a million citizens. Uh, sleeping giant citizens. Please share the video. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you that want to give a life to Christ, you can email me. My email is in the description box. Me and my wife are here to help many and to lead many to the righteous path. And that's the path of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you that want to send us a letter, it's a prayer request. You can send it to me, Luis Santiago, or my wife, Jessica Santiago, at 3432 U.S. Highway 19, number 2, Holiday, Florida, 34691. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless you all. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But he's the only way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time later. Peace.